Okay, welcome back. Front page news yesterday. There are a lot of new drugs to treat prostate cancer. The problem is it's extremely expensive. It could cost a patient thousands and thousands of dollars per month. And there's a new study out proving that mammograms do save lives. Dr. David Samadhi, Vice Chairman of Urology at Mount Sinai now, joins us with all this information. Nice Good to morning. have you back here, Thank Dr. Samadhi. So, okay, this study sounds like, this mammogram study sounds like it contradicts the, the very controversial one a few months ago where it said you don't need mammograms in your 40s. So here's the history and the story behind this. The U.S. Preventive Task Force came up with the fact that you should get mammogram after the age of 50. American Cancer Society recommends getting the mammogram at the age of 40. So what happens to this population between 40 to 49? And this study, which is from Sweden, following over 130,000 women for three decades. This is the longest study, longest follow-up that we've ever had. Basically tells you that if you get the mammogram at the age of 40, you would reduce the risk of death by 30%. Great news for patients with, uh, with breast cancer. It's, it's really important to pay attention to this. I've been a big advocate of screening for prostate cancer and breast cancer at an early age. It's the information that you need to have. But what is it like a baseline? So It's always good to get a baseline and okay. compare it with the other years. Now, here's the tricky part. When you do mass screening across the board, you're always going to find certain cancers that are not life-threatening that may be turn into surgeries or procedures. I think the interpretation of this screening is more important than whether you should do it or not. That's really the big thing over here. Well, well what are you going to recommend to your patients? What, what, give us some I, firm guidelines, if you I, could. When it comes to breast cancer, get a baseline mammogram at the age of 40, Greg. For 40, that's the first Absolutely. time for a woman. And if you don't have any family histories and if you don't have any risk, you can go to 45 and make every year after that. If you have high risk, if you have the receptors, if you have family history, then start at the age of 40 and make sure you do it every year. Whether it's breast cancer, by the way, and prostate cancer, these two diseases always go parallel, same number of incidents, same number of deaths every year, and that's what I say for prostate cancer for men out there also. Which is a blood test, by the way, right? It's a PSA, exactly right. It's a PSA and the exam. Which is a lot less than what women have to go with those horrible mammogram machines. That's exactly right. You know, oh it's my amazing. my goodness. It's like you're a pancake in that I, thing. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, oh, boy, is it that bad, it's really? It's bad, right? Well, well, it's tough. I mean, it's a, well, I don't know if it's easier to get a digital rectal exam or mammogram. But that's, a that's a discussion we'll do another day. But, you know, both of them could be devastating. Anyway. Let's talk about the, 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 these drugs now, the costing so much, the prostate drugs. So, it's a, in a way, it's a good news because these are patients who have had already late spread. This is like not early diagnosis of prostate cancer. These are the patients that prostate cancer is already spread to the bone. They have failed every treatment and now we're giving them this prostate vaccine. The vaccine itself is, no, is a misnomer. It's not a vaccine that would give to prevent. It's already when it's already spread. Now, the cost of these medications are ninety-three to a hundred thousand dollars for this treatment to add two months to your life. That's it, two months. Two months. Now, for the ones that are diagnosed with prostate cancer, every day is a whole new day and it's like extending the life. So it's a very controversial debate. I think it's a great news for patients with prostate cancer because it's a whole new window that we're looking at. The question is, who is going to pay for this with the financial issues we have with Medicare? How are we going to fund this? And my guess is that there's going to be more companies, more competition, and hopefully, long term, the cost of these medications will come down and we can provide better care for our patients. These are not the patients with early disease or prostate cancers. These are the ones that have failed surgery, they have failed radiation, they have failed chemotherapy. It's the last stage, the late stage of the disease. Dr. Samadhi, great to see you. Thank you so much for uh, sharing this information with Thank us. Thank you very Appreciate much.